Exploring Landscape Painting. Close your eyes and picture a painting. Now open them. What did you see? Did you see an abstract artwork? Like this oil painting by Jeanette McCain featuring shapes and vibrant colors. Or maybe a portrait of a person, like this sweet child holding her doll by Seymour J. Guy. Or perhaps a still life, like this Martin Johnson Heat oil painting of a small vase holding an abundance of flowers. Or did you picture a tranquil landscape, like this castle by Sanford Robinson Gifford? Let's take a closer look at landscape painting. The term landscape comes from the Dutch word landschap, which means a patch of land. A landscape can be a painting or drawing of any scenic view, of mountains or marshes, of wooded trees or tropical forests. of sparkling oceans or dry deserts. And they can include people, animals, or buildings, or even come from the artist's imagination. Do you like to go outside and explore nature? The Hudson River School, a very special group of American landscape painters did just that. They felt the American landscape was a national treasure that needed to be explored and celebrated. During the 19th century, the United States was still relatively untouched, and artists like Thomas Cole, the recognized father of the Hudson River School, Asher B. Durand, and Albert Bierstadt were eager to paint these beautiful landscapes in their own unique styles to show the world the beauty of our country. On the left side, we see a half dome from Yosemite in Wyoming. Quite beautiful, isn't it? Now on the right is Albert Bierstadt's interpretation of the landscape painted in the Hudson River School style. The painting is an idealized view based on sketches Bierstadt took while visiting the West. Bierstadt's lighting makes the scene all the more grandeur and the size of the painting makes it feel as if the viewer is actually there. As Bierstadt said, truly all is remarkable and a wellspring of amazement and wonder. Man is so fortunate to dwell in the American Garden of Eden. When Albert was 29 years old, he was given the unique opportunity to travel the unexplored and newly conquered American West with land surveyor, Colonel Frederick W. Lander. He created sketches like this and brought them back to his studio in New York City's 10th Street Studio Building. From these sketches, he created the Rocky Mountains, Lander's Peak. In 1863, he returned to the West with friends pressing further west to California. A storm in the Rocky Mountain, Mount Rosalie, was based on this expedition. Notice how the dramatic, almost theatrical lighting sets the tone in both paintings. This humble butterfly is a painting also done by Albert Bierstadt. You can see where he's even signed his name on the right side. Bierstadt made these for guests at a party in his home. On one half of a piece of paper, he squirted oil paints, then carefully folded the other side of the paper on top. Using palette knives similar to the ones on the right, he pushed and manipulated the paints through the folded paper. Finally, he opened the paper to reveal this beautiful butterfly. The size of Bierstadt's landscapes often added to the dramatic feeling. The butterfly, on the other hand, was a small, intimate gift that Bierstadt would present to special guests at his home. What a difference in size. What a difference in intent. We hope to see you at the Morse Museum, where you can explore our collection of landscape paintings 
and see Albert Beardstadt's butterfly.